Welcome back to another edition of the Bearcat Coaches Show. We are in studio with head wrestling coach, R.C. LaHaye. Coach, you're just back from Iowa competing in nationals. You sent nine guys. Overall, a great season, finishing national runner-up in the wrestling championships. Yeah, you know, we're, we're really excited. We're, we're really proud of what the guys have done all season. And, you know, we've, we've traveled all across America for the last six months to wrestle the best teams in the country. And, to see it all culminate at the national, uh, national tournament is just um, exciting. We're excited and proud of the guys. Not only do you have some team awards, you had some individual awards as well. I believe six All-Americans, a program record for you guys. How does that speak to not just what the team was able to do, but you guys, they were getting it done individually and it all works together with the point system? Yeah, you know, that just um, it's a testament to what we've been doing as a program. You know, the guys have really worked hard all season and um, each individually, I, I know they all had goals of winning national titles. That didn't happen, but they got the next best thing and, and scored a lot of points for the team, which you know helped helped the, the team finish second in the country. Yeah, speaking of scoring points for the team, you had a guy Logan Hall compete for a national title. He's come into Lander with that goal in mind. He was able to do it on the national stage. Yeah, you know, um, Logan's been a warrior all year. He has um, kicked, fought, scratched for every everything he's gotten and. You know, not the most talented guy, but the guy just knows how to win. And I'm really proud of him. I know, you know, losing in, the, in overtime in the national finals wasn't his goal. And um, I know it was heartbreaking, but this team doesn't finish second in the country without him and, and everything he's brought to the program. Speaking for next season, you've got tons of momentum coming in. Some of the returners that we hope to have back. I know yeah. David Hunsberger, a freshman, everybody's looking forward to what he can do. What are some other guys that we can look forward for next season? Well, we, primed for a big year. Yeah, well, we return everybody minus Logan Hall. Yeah. And he's going to be tough to replace, but, um, you know, we return the most points in the country. And um, we're excited between Joplin and Lusk and Brower and Huntsberger and um, Iacovetti and Debo. I mean, we, we return an army of guys that can all compete for national titles. So we're really loaded up for something special next season. Coach, we can't wait. Thank you for joining us here on the Bearcat Coaches Show. Thank you. Stay tuned for more of it after these messages. You've envisioned it before, your future. It's big and it's bold. Now it's time to make it happen. Our experienced faculty and friendly staff work to provide a personalized and supportive academic experience that most institutions cannot match. Lander University offers fast, flexible, and affordable online and graduate programs for those who want to launch their career path to the next level. When you launch with Lander, the world will take notice. Learn more today at www.lander.edu. Welcome back to the Lander Coach to show as we are here with head men's basketball coach Omar Watad. Team ended its season in the NCAA tournament. Congratulations on dancing. 22 wins on the season. Turning that around from your first two seasons, 20 plus win season, making it all the way to the PBC final and the NCAA tournament bid. You have to be pleased with the way it went. Yeah, there's, there's no question. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely pleased. I'm pleased with the season. I played out. Um, obviously, one that we, you know, Disappointed it's over. You, know, you want to be able to go as far as possible, but uh, we, we ran into a really, really, really you know elite basketball team in Lincoln Memorial, and uh, they were the better team uh, that day. And um, I, I'm pleased with the season, man. The guys, the guys showed mental toughness and fortitude the whole year. They played together on both ends of the floor. They were unified as you know, truly a unit the entire year. Um, yeah, definitely a successful campaign overall, for sure. You know, the goal was, you know, my goal personally was to make the dance in year three, and that includes, you know, COVID year being year one, mm -hmm. which was just different. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, you know, it's almost year two and a half, really. But um, the guys did a good job, and it was a successful year. I had a wonderful staff. Uh, my assistants did an awesome job the whole year preparing. And it's a grind, you know. Uh, it's a grind. It's it's hard to make it. It's hard to dance. It's hard to dance, and uh, it was fun to be able to be, uh, you know, practicing and, and um, playing basketball during spring break. And um, yeah. you know, ultimately the goal is to maximize your potential. And I think you know, with the circumstances that we were dealing with uh, as a team, um, if you really look back and about you know forty eight hours to, you know, really process it. And I think with all the circumstances, specifically the injuries that we dealt with, that. You know, the entire, you know, the entire second semester. Yeah. Uh, I think we did uh, maximize our potential. And I think if we were fully healthy the whole year, I don't know if I'd feel that way, but I, I do think we maximized our potential this year and did, did a really good job. Chandler, Chandler Lindsay had his season 
cut short at Young Harris. He was a senior, came in from Coker, was excellent in his play, um, eclipsed the thousand on his career here at Horn Arena. Uh, Chandler, uh, Chandler Lindsay, not only him, but Jared Sharfield, Jalen Pugh, they got their curtain call at the very end of that game. The seniors, um, you know, two of them coming in, Jalen Pugh, Chandler Lindsay, it felt like they had been here for years. And of course, Jared Sherfield, you talk about him all the time of how he's an ambassador. All three of those guys are, but the senior class and uh, they, Jalen Pugh and Jared Sherfield were in the press conference with you. And I think Jalen said it best that Landers just getting started. Yeah, I mean, every year is going to be its own separate entity. And um, at the end of the day, you got to, um, you know, you got to retool, reload, get better. The, to the players that are coming back have to improve. Us as coaches, we have to improve. And we got to bring in more players and enhance the talent level of the roster um, with, you know, what we're losing in those three guys, of course. Um, I'm super proud and so thankful to be able to have coached, you know, share for those three years. Um, Chandler and Jalen, they fit right in, like you said, simply because of their character as people. And they're really good basketball players as well. I'm grateful for them to allow me to coach them for their final year of college basketball and uh i'll be in their corner for life man i'll be in their corner for life you know like little brothers to me and so super grateful of those three guys man yeah you know you know want to dwell on this season and talk about what's next you know that's down the road but some guys that are on the team this year they ended the season with a great stretch tommy moore was one of them he had 18 just one away from his career high in the ncaa tournament was playing great down the stretch the defense was there as it was all season you know he struggled from the floor shooting wise at the beginning of the season, he never you know, lost confidence, and you see why I was paying dividends at the very end. We expect to, you know, do you expect him to bring that type of confidence into next year? Yeah, I, mean, I expect him to start putting the work here in a couple of weeks when they get back into it. And, um, you know, Tommy's a really good basketball player. There's no question about that. He's got to he's gotta be, you know, become more consistent with certain aspects of his scoring, and, um, and he needs to keep the decision making the same and um, keep that assist to turnover ratio at a high clip. Doesn't have to be fifth in the nation again, but he needs to keep that at a high clip. And uh, but he's got to you know enhance his enhance his game even more to where those lulls are few and far between, right? And then uh, you know guys like Jacob Cooper, they have to mm -hmm. improve as well. Um, and you know I, I'll be meeting with those guys this week, um, just in regards to you know what they need to improve in the off season, how they need to get better. Uh, other guys, obviously we know, you know Connor McKay, Dom Stanford, Avon Baines, John Gugleg, Nigel Colvin, Sebastian Augusto. Um, et cetera, et cetera. I'll be meeting with all those guys, and um, you know, guys got to get better. That's just how this thing works. You know, you you, you recruit in a, in a perfect world, you recruit good talent and good people, and then you improve. You know, simple as that. And you improve from day to day, iron sharpening iron in practice. But then off season, that's when players are made, teams are made in the fall and into the spring. Um, and so, you know, they gotta they gotta get busy and get after it, and uh, improve their individual skill sets. You said that you wanted to be dancing by year three. Yeah. You had 20 plus wins. I know it's very early, but what are you expecting, you know, for year four and beyond? It's too early. It it's is too early. It's, okay. it's just about um, improving, just improving on a daily basis. Like I said, guys got to get better here starting in a couple of weeks, improving weight room, skill set, uh, and then we got to recruit. You know, we'll bring, we'll bring probably a class of four, maybe five, and uh, see where we're at with that. Try to fit pieces that. Um, can you know replace what we're losing, but also just enhance other parts of the roster, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, yeah, no, the goal, the goal, you know, that was a personal goal. It was never, never discussed with the guys about that being the goal. It's the only time I'm really bringing it up now because you know we made it and the season's over. But you know, the goal is to be the best we can be on a daily basis, and that's ultimately what it's going to take for the team to flourish and be its best self. You know, for one year from now. Coach, congratulations on a great season. Appreciate We're looking forward to next year. Uh, they, you guys, you can watch more of the Bearcat Coaches Show after these messages. Break on the Lake offers a menu loaded with a wide range of delicious seafood and steaks, along with amazing selection of handcrafted cocktails. From appetizers to soups and salads, Break on the Lake's food is served with an intimate space perfect for a cozy meal with family or a quiet date night. Whatever you're here for, you can always count on Break on the Lake for fresh seafood and a warm welcome from their team. Thanks to Sports Break and Break on the Lake, proud sponsors of Bearcat Athletics. The women's tennis team went 2-0 last week, picking up their first conference win of the year over Augusta 5-2, and then backed that up by defeating North Greenville 6-1. Let's hear from Coach Allison on the team's play. Okay. I'm here with Coach Allison. Coach, last week, uh, 
Last Sunday, you guys went down to Augusta, conference opener, was able to come back with a 5-2 victory over the Jaguars. Uh, how did it feel being able to get that first conference victory of the season? Yeah, that was huge for us. Um, last year, we had a tough loss against them, so that we knew they were going to be challenging, and they, they never really give up until the end, so we knew what we were getting into, and the girls really wanted it, and I was really proud of my um, six uh, Faye uh, Batoon and um, my number one, Zena, they both came back. Um, we needed one of them to come back to win the match, and they both came back, and so it was, I was really proud of them. It was a huge mental game for us to be able to overcome that um, and give us the push for the rest of the season. And uh, then the next day, you guys uh, took on North Greenville non-conference. Uh, no letdown there. You came away with the 6-1 win. Um, how did you feel the team responded after the big win against Augusta to come back and win? Um, I think that it just carried us into that next match. Um, and we really, after a tough loss against Belmont Abbey, our focus was going into spring break with 3-0. and And so we beat Francis Marion, we beat Augusta, we beat North Greenville. Um, and so that was really big for us um, going into spring break and then coming back and finishing the season. And then this week you've got a double header on Saturday. You guys um, play Converse and Sumter. Uh, talk a little bit about how it is physically and mentally just a quick turnaround to play maybe not right after each other but I think the times are one and four. Yeah so um, the nice thing about our team is we have such a big team that we're able to kind of mix up the lineup so one of the reasons we have um, we play double headers is because we're able to get everybody a match um, which is really huge um, for us as a team it makes us really deep um, when we're when we need to bring somebody in that um, doesn't necessarily play every match they're ready to go and this season has been a testament to that because we have had so many injuries and so many sicknesses um, and so um, that's one of the reasons we do the double headers and so um, it's more of like everybody gets a match not necessarily turn around and um, gotcha. be getting ready to go okay well, good luck this week, and uh, we'll be cheering you on this Saturday. Yes, thank you, yes. And we'll be back after this with the Bearcat Coaches Show. Open since 1959, the Dixie Drive-In is home to the Dixie Cheese. A short order restaurant with a family-friendly atmosphere, the Dixie Drive-In offers comfort foods like burgers, fries, and sweet tea. Located across the street from the Jeff May Complex at 600 Montague Avenue, be sure to plan your post-game meal at the Dixie Drive-In. The number 12 ranked men's tennis team traveled to Savannah to take on the national champion and number one Barry last week and fell 4-2 to two for their first loss of the season. We talked to Coach Simpson about the team's performance in the top 15 matchup. I'm here with head men's tennis coach uh, Brett Simpson. Coach, since last time we talked, you guys went 2-1, and one, had uh, nice wins over Francis Marion and Lenore Ryan. Uh, Talk a little bit about the team's performance in those two wins. Two wins. Yeah, uh, had a good match with Francis Marion. Uh, thought we played well, and yeah, we went up to Lenore Ryan, and, and uh, we're strong there as well. You know, we, we had in the back of our minds we were about to play one of the best teams in the nation, Barry, who we played uh, this past Tuesday, and yeah, you know, we gave him a good run. We didn't quite get there. Uh, we lost 4-2. Uh, it was a match that could have gone either way, so. In that respect, it was encouraging, but we, we actually went there hoping to win. So, you know, maybe a tad disappointing, but uh, it wasn't by the performance. The performance was quite strong. And um, you were talking about Barry, uh, obviously the defending national champions, number one team in the nation. Uh, tough loss, guys played hard. Uh, and like you said, you always want to come away with a win, but what were some of the positives you were able to get out of that um, playing number one team in the nation? Yeah, well, they're, they're basically the same team they were last year, a lot of the same players. So these guys have won national championships before. Uh, I like the way that we uh, got after it in doubles. Uh, it was close. We, we won one of them, but we lost the other two. So we were down the doubles point. But uh, I thought we sent them a message that we were there to play and compete. And then singles, yeah, we were in a lot of the matches. Uh, lost a couple of close ones as well as winning a few close ones. and. Our number one guy, Hugo Ragnier, was serving for the match when the match stopped. So he, he possibly was robbed of a solid victory there. Could have been a 4-3, probably should have been a 4-3 match. So we were right there. We know that we can compete with these teams. And, uh, you know, moving forward, our goal is to, to start beating some of these top teams. And then coming up, you've got uh, USC Aiken, uh, or not Aiken, but USC uh, Sumter. Sumter. And then uh, Newberry, 
uh, next week. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about the team going into those two matches? Yeah, we've just come off a couple of days off with spring break. So, uh, yeah, we're looking to, you know, get into it tomorrow against USC Sumter. Um, and looking ahead, uh, Newberry, who are having a pretty good year this year, a, a team that's, you know, borderline on the rankings. So uh, we're looking forward to that match. Any match we can play against uh, ranked teams helps us uh, with the point system they use for Division Two. So, yeah, we're, we're just happy to be playing matches again. And then we also have uh, North Greenville next week. But uh, we've still got some big conference matches to play yeah. yet. So everything's leading up to that. All right. Well, Coach, thanks, and good luck in the uh, upcoming matches. And we'll be back after this with more of the Bearcat Coaches Show. All right. If you're looking for a place to enjoy good eats and good times, look no further than Sports Break. Great food, friendly service, and a fun atmosphere have been on the menu since 1990. So bring the family by for lunch, stop in to watch a game, or enjoy a late night with friends with some cold drinks while listening to live music at Sports Break. The women's lacrosse team picked up a non-conference win on the road over Lenore Ryan 10 to 7 last week. Hear from what Coach DeShiel had to say about the team's win and their home match with Embry Riddle this Thursday. Here with head women's lacrosse coach Bob DeShiel. Coach, after two tough losses to nationally ranked Wingate and Limestone, your girls have bounced back with two wins over really good opponents in Catawba and LR. How did, what have you seen from your girls to bounce back the way they did? Uh, just a really motivated squad. Um, just coming coming back after that day, after the loss to Limestone, we, we had a bunch of meetings. Had a, had just a really motivated squad of, of girls who were fired up to get better and, and to get to get us on the right track and to go on the road and get two two road victories during spring break was was huge for us to to really um, just regroup and and get refocused as we have a couple of nationally ranked teams coming coming to town. Um, against Catawba, Alyssa Sukan was the story. She broke the program record for points in the game with 10. What did you see from her that led that offense in that big win you guys had? Uh, she was she was excellent. Um, she really quarterbacked the squad. She, so she was able to distribute and, and was finding uh, girls open in the eight all, all day. But then also when, when it was her opportunity, um, she was able to drive and finish. Um, it was just a really, really well-balanced performance by, by the, the team in general. But Alyssa quarterbacking and getting us started in the right foot um, was huge. And you guys come out last week against Loran on the road, a really usually tough in the South Atlantic Conference in Loran squad. And it was the first game all year that no team really established control. It was a nip and tug game the whole game. What did you see from your girls to be able to tough through that game and pull out a win? Uh, we, we started great. Uh, it was pretty, the first half was probably our best half of the season. Um, and then LR, they, like you said, they're a great squad. They were picked third in their conference. So they, they battled. They, they uh, really, um, really challenged us in the second half. And uh, what I loved is that we were able to, to kind of hang on, um, have a really couple of key defensive stops. Kara Crosby was huge in the cage, um, but our offense was really clicking in the first half and defense really uh, closed the deal in the second half. So it was, it was a full team effort. It was probably our most complete 60 minutes that we played. Um, and it was awesome to get a, a big time road win. So you guys come back home this week facing against 17th ranked Embry Riddle coming up from Florida. What's the message to your team looking into this game against a nationally ranked opponent? Uh, just kind of, we're, we're battle tested. It's not the first nationally ranked team that we played, um, but now we're just kind of talking about how it's a great opportunity to make a, a huge impact on the regional uh, level, but also on the national level, um, and that it's an opportunity that we're ready for and that we're going to have to really battle for. Um, but we're excited to, to host them and uh, to, to have a great result. What do you think are some of the keys to the game to come away for the win? Uh, possession on offense, um, just being able to take care of it. Um, they're, they're very good defense, um, very physical, uh, but we really have to win, win draws, which we've been doing. Our draw unit's been fantastic, um, but really valuing the ball and being able to, to finish with a shot and hopefully a goal <laughs> at, the, at the end of the possession, but really, really taking care of it. And then defensively, they, they've got a very loaded offense, very well-balanced offense. But being able to mark cutters and being able to to uh, only to limit them to one chance and be able to clear the ball. Coach, thank you very much. We're excited to see you guys play this week. We'll be right back with the Bearcat Coaches Show right after this. Loving you is a way that you made me so very happy. I'm so glad you came into my. Wow. 
The softball team split a non-conference doubleheader with Florida Southern last Wednesday and fell to Columbus State in conference play over the weekend. We sat down with Coach Crawford to get his thoughts on the team as they returned to home this weekend. All right. I'm here with head softball coach Glenn Crawford. Coach, uh, last week spring break, you guys went down, split with Florida Southern, uh, then had a tough battle on the weekend against Columbus State. Uh, what did you get um, some positives from the team last week? Well, I thought, you know, number one, being on the road for seven days is, is rough. And uh, I think, you know, going down to uh, Florida Southern, uh, good team down there, uh, threw the ball well, hit the ball well. And, and I, I thought we just came up short on the end of the second game. So I liked the way we battled. And, um, you know, going into Columbus State, we, we knew they were going to be tough. And uh, they got good pitching and, and, and can hit the ball uh, with the best of them. And, uh, and, you know, we just didn't make a couple of plays that, that cost us a little bit. And, uh, but I like our fight. You know, if, if anything, I got out of it. And, you know, I thought Cam threw really well. I thought uh, Bailey threw well uh, um, uh, in the, later in the week, a the weekend there. And uh, I thought that we played, you know, defensively. I thought we could have played better, but I, I like the fight. We didn't give up. We could have packed it in. We could have uh, came home early and, and after five innings both times. But I thought we, we hung in there and fought and made adjustments against their pitchers. and. And put the ball in play and had our chance, had our chances, and we just got to get a key hit here and there, and it'd be a different, different, different story. So this week, you guys finally get to come back home. You guys host Young Harris this weekend. Uh, took two out of three last year uh, from the Mountain Lions. Uh, what are you looking forward um, going into this series? Well, you know, last year's last year, and, and Young Harris has gotten better, and uh, and I expect it to be another Peach Belt brawl. Um, really do. Uh, I think they're going to come in. They're going to. Uh, they're going to want to do their pitching, which is they got good pitching, and they're going to want to hit the ball. And uh, I think it's going to be the team that makes the adjustments and, and makes the plays and does the little things that's going to come out ahead. And and uh, I, you know I like our chances of doing that. I think we got a, I think our team's very hungry, and I think we're uh, very solid on all three phases. We just got to show up and do it. Okay. Well, coach, thanks and good luck this weekend, and we'll be cheering you on. All right. Thank you very much. And we'll be back after these messages with more of the Bearcat Coaches Show. In NCAA Division II, student-athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student-athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student-athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. The men's lacrosse team picked up a 19-16 non-conference win over Barton on Saturday. Hear from what Coach Lepore had to say after the win and their game against Anderson this week. One. We're back here with the Lander Bearcat Coaches Show with head men's lacrosse coach Tony Lepore. Tony, a bit of a two games going two different ways, a really tough game the Saturday against Barton, 19-6, and then you guys steamroll Tusculum tying a program high for goals, if you don't mind, just kind of going through your thoughts on, on the two games. Sure. Um, obviously, it was spring break, you know what I mean, and it was a really cool opportunity on Tuesday evening to host our first ever night home game here at Lander. So the guys came out really excited, and, uh, yeah, the scoreboard reflected that. Um, offensively, you know, things were just really clicking. Um, defensively, did a really good job. I th it was just easily, you know, the most complete game we've put together so far this year, so I was really pleased with that. And then, of course, we had to turn around and play a very tough Barton team on Saturday to neutral site matchup. Um, they've had our number the last couple of years, so I know our guys are really excited about that one. Um, bit of a slow start. We fell behind early, but uh, made a couple of adjustments, and um, you know, we kind of caught fire there, especially in the, uh, in the second quarter, leading us into the second half. And uh, another game where we uh, shot the ball really well um, and got enough stops, did enough defensively in the end to, uh, to close it out. After a, a tough loss to a very tough Emory Riddle squad, what, what was the message to the guys? I mean, that, that was a very close game, only down by two goals. You know, for the most part, you guys held each other in check, scoring the same amount of goals with the exception of two quarters. But what, what was the message? And whatever it was, it seemed the guys have really taken, taken to it over the last two games. Well, um, it's a lot of just, you know, reminding them to, to trust our, our process, our principles. Uh, believe in the fundamentals and trust each other. Um, we knew that the Embry Riddle game was going to be a close game, uh, and it really, it legitimately came down to just a couple of plays. Um, 
And that's what happens at this level. Everybody's really good. Every team's are really well coached with great players. Um, we had a very close game with them last year, and uh, we knew that going into the Ember Riddle game. So, you know, despite the fact that uh, it didn't turn out in our favor, um, we knew that there were some some bright spots there. Obviously, especially on offense. Um, you know, and just uh, remembering that it's a long season and there's a lot of games. And uh, what was really nice was we took the lessons from that game and uh, applied them uh, obviously really well in the over the spring break week we were able to pick up two wins. You, you talked about solid defensive play. Right now you guys are tied for six for turnovers per game and tied for third with Anderson, who actually played this week in total turnovers, there's only two teams currently in Division Two with over 100 turnovers. You guys come in with 96. Uh, you know, with those numbers, you know, what's that say about the defensive unit so far this season? Obviously, still a lot more to go, but the fact that you're able to gain all those extra possessions, you know, this early in the season. Well, um, you know, that's Coach Salter and Coach Gifford uh, working with our defense. So we've been spending a good bit of time recently on uh, coaching ball pressure um, and utilizing uh, good slide opportunities to create double teams to put the ball on the ground. Uh, our guys have really bought into it. Um, and fortunately for us, we you know we have the athleticism um, at, with our defensive personnel in order to, to do that sort of stuff. Um, we're, we're a team that, uh, you know, because we don't lack athleticism in the defensive end, we don't have to play very conservatively. Um, we're able to go out, challenge, you know, other teams. And, you know, while maybe we are giving up more goals than we'd like right now, um, you're correct. Like, the, the we're able to cause a lot of turnovers. And that's, again, from, from the ball pressure defensively. And also, uh, one of the things we take a good bit of pride in is we're a good riding team. Um, we like to um, put a lot of pressure on teams when they clear the ball. And, um, you know, that's a c credit to Coach Gifford and, and to our attackmen um, for really buying into that and, you know, coaching them up game to game. And, I think if you watch us play, our guys take a lot of pride in the hustle and the effort plays uh, between the lines to, to get those turnovers. And obviously you mentioned a lot of goals being scored right now. You guys are top 10 in a lot of offensive categories in the nation. you got three guys, I believe, right now with over 20 goals. Adam Mather, Nolan Oki, and Kyle DiCristino. Uh, Kyle should be named Player of the Week. He scored 10 goals this past week. If you don't mind just kind of touching on the offensive side. And, you know, outside of those three, you guys have been having a lot of guys score, even some long stick middies. And on occasion, you've had some defensemen join up and fire home some goals as well. Yeah, I mean, the guys are shooting the ball really well right now, keeping it simple on offense, just doing what works, sticking to our principles. Um, and, you know, fortunately for us, we have talented players at every position. And, um, one of the things that I'm going to be very complimentary of our offensive guys are is um, if it's not their day, it's somebody else's day. We don't try and force it. Um, you know, we're seeing uh, different uh, guys on the score sheet each week. Um, you know, as it relates to Kyle, like, yeah, he had a really big game on Saturday for us. Uh, he shot the ball well. He didn't try and do too much. And when they started to focus some more attention on him, he, he distributed it well, too, because he also had three assists in the game. You know, so... Um, but uh, it's a it's a it's a real team effort. Obviously, you know we running the offense, building the chemistry together, um, shooting the ball responsibly, and just uh, keeping it simple. You know, it's it's not a terribly complex game if you just do the fundamentals and you do them fast. Obviously, this week a big test for you guys. You take a nationally ranked Anderson team who you played really tough last year. I believe a one or two goal game. Uh, you know, going into this year, uh, what's what's the game plan to take on the Trojans? Well, the first thing you have to address is they're they're absolutely dominant at the faceoff X. You know they have a probably top draw guy in the nation there, uh, and really talented on offense. You know you look at the possession advantages that they ma manufacture through their faceoff wins. Uh, that then they also are you know amongst the tops in the country in the, a lot of the offensive categories because they have such a, a possession advantage. So we have to address that. Um, last year, you know, we, we were able to pull out a close win against them, and I think it we'll have to use a lot of the same strategy to, to mitigate, um, you know, what they have at the faceoff, and also we have to continue to play well on offense um, and generate extra possessions, like through the cause turnovers and through our riding, and just, uh, you know, we anticipate a really tough game. Uh, they're a very good team, and um, you know, but our, I know our guys are excited about it, and I think it should be a it should be a fun one. Well, thank you very much, Tony. Obviously a big game here for the Bearcats against the Anderson Trojans here at Van Taylor Stadium. Hope to see you all then. Stay tuned for more of the Lander Bearcat Coaches Show. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of the Bearcat Coaches Show. Catch us next week to keep up on everything happening with Lander Athletics.